It's not the size of the warrior in the fights, but the size of the fights in the warrior. Here's a look at the NECA toys, Dungeons and Dragons, Elkhorn Ultimate Action Figure. Elkhorn has been Strongheart's most stalwart companion over the years. Unflinchingly loyal, timelessly optimistic, and fiercely devoted to the destruction of evil in all its forms. He's not especially bright, so he fights with his heart rather than his wits. Age has drained much of the strength from Elkhorn's body. Strongheart has urged Elkhorn to retire, but the old dwarf stubbornly refuses to do so. How do you really expect to ask a hero to hang it up when he's still got the fight coursing through his veins? Just before, of course, we get a closer look at the Dungeons & Dragons Elkhorn, if I can, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA that provided the sample we could have a look at. The dwarf is going to be small in size. If you actually go only to the top of his head, then he's actually only about five and three quarters of an inch in height. However, though, if you go to the top of his horn, being the highest point, well, then Elkhorn is actually about six and a quarter inches in height, and that works out to be a figure that's 16 centimeters tall. Now, we haven't yet looked at the good Paladin Strongheart, so I can't bring him in for comparisons. But I do have at least one evil fighter. Here's what the figure looks like along with War Duke. War Duke is a standard-sized human character from the world of Dungeons and & Dragons. And in this case, even including the horns, Tiny Elkhorn only goes to about the shoulders of War Duke. I can't even believe the amount of accessories that get included with Elkhorn. He's literally packing a tiny armory. One of the included accessories happens to be already attached onto the back of the figure's body, that being his pack. The backpack is one of the more complicated things to try to get onto his body. I've already successfully done that, but I did want to flip this around so you guys can actually see what the pack looks like. Uh, to try to remove this, first of all, I mean, always seem to be popping his head back off, but it basically attaches by a clip. If you look at the clip, though, it's so close to the rest of the backpack that it's almost impossible to get that hooked onto his body. There's a little loop right here, or a little part of his strap for his shoulder piece, that the, the clip for the pack is supposed to fit on that. Uh, the, the thing I ended up having to do, though, is just grabbing myself a screwdriver. I just happen to have one here right now. And I fed a screwdriver basically behind the clip like this. And I just pried it somewhat away from the plastic. Just enough for a lip to be formed where I could actually then fit it on the back of his body. But it's very difficult to do. I would certainly say, and I haven't yet done this, probably a better idea is to heat this maybe with a hairdryer just to soften up the plastic. Then take yourself some sort of appliance, some sort of tool, feed it through there while the plastic is still cooling. And it might just help to improve the clip, giving it a little bit more reach. The clip, though, again, uh, other than just the clip being difficult to fit onto his body, does look good. I was actually surprised to see that the front of the pack does actually open, and it does look like it could store stuff inside. Although, even though this is softer plastic, so there's a little bit of give here, there seems to be more plastic, a little more brittle on the back of it. So I, again, only pried up just a little bit. And even then, I don't know how many things you'd really be able to store in there. Uh, maybe, if anything, you could put the heart stone in there, for example, the jug, maybe the crystal, for example. But even just only opening it like this, I would imagine it would be very then difficult to try to get everything back out of the pack. But the pack f uh, strap basically fits. There's a little loop right there. You can see if I get my thumb out of the way. There's a little loop right there. You basically just then take the strap for the pack of the flap. Oh boy. And basically just feed, feed that in that way. Uh, some of the other things that the pack has also is that these the little loops on the side. So like for example, the figure also comes included with a battle axe. Axe looks good. I like these little chipped away pieces that there is on the metal. It's not sharp, obviously, to the touch, or you'd be seeing right now me bleeding. But you can see that it's a really nice looking axe. Painted well here in silver. Uh, the actual head of the axe has the edge, the burr, in a nice lighter silver. And then they've nicely replicated a wood grain look for the handle. This, of course, can fit into his hands, but it can also as well store it on the side. I'm sure these loops also serve other purposes too, but I found that the axe was probably the easiest thing to fit inside the loops. And again, you just feed it from the top and then you just sort of guide its way all the way down until it fits on the side like this. There is also holes on the other side because also included with the figure, if I can actually find it, there we go. He comes with a sheath for his sword. Again, the sheath looks really nice. Two-tone effects of brown here, much darker brown, and then the straps around the sheath are a lighter brown. Some nice gold accents there on the top. Equally nice gold accents down below. 
and on the back of this there are pegs. So the pegs fit actually onto the side if I flip this the right way. There's holes on the side and then you just take those and you plug them in place just like that. Then of course while we're still talking of the sheath he also comes include the sword. Love the look of the sword. The sword does seem a little short on the blade but it probably would be accommodating a little bit better for the dwarf. I do like the way they've actually done the guard here. And of course the hilt just above that is wrapped off nicely in what would be simulated or real leather, I would imagine, in the real world. And you've got a little bit of gold there also on the top there as well. Any one of these accessories, by the way, even though I am really spending more time packing it onto his backpack, would actually fit uh, into his hands. He does also have gripping hands as well. But for right now, at least, we're going to sheath the sword. And now he basically has everything to store on his pack. Again, you could probably store stuff inside, but I would imagine it would just be a very difficult thing to try to fish everything back out. Those things, by the way, I did say, I mentioned earlier, he does, for example, come include with the Heartstone. Heartstone does have sort of a, I don't know what you would call it, kind of like a, a crystal look to it. And certainly it's not smooth. You can see it sort of has like flat angular edges to it. Really lo looks good though. And again, like, I guess if you wanted to, you could probably store that in there as well, along with the crystal. The crystal sort of at the bottom here starts like a stone, but you can see it has some really nice translucent purple plastic. I love all these accessories that come included with this figure. Uh, move those off to the side. The figure also comes included with a tiny little dagger. I did say earlier, I think this was the axe. I think it's actually more close to being a hatchet, just to kind of make, make sure I'm correctly saying that. The figure also comes included with a tiny dagger, though. The same gold that was applied to the sword seems to have also been applied here to the dagger. The handle, the guard, the blade itself, all nicely painted. He does also have a storage space. I don't know why he's looking over there. The figure also does have a storage spot, as he also has a scabbard or sheath on the side of his belt. This stores the, the dagger. If I don't drop it, don't drop it. He stores the dagger nicely there. You just slide this in place. There's a little slot in the top, and that just sheaths in place like that. So some decent storage there on the figure. He doesn't even have to carry really anything. I mean, he has to still carry things, but he doesn't have to carry as much in his own hands. The figure also comes include the jug. Go, 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 go. I'm really sure what's inside, nor would it be difficult to actually drink out of this if the cork was still in the top, but obviously the cork isn't removable. A nice little jug. I always kind of consider the smaller warriors in movies always to be the ones that carry around jugs. Is that just a strange thing, a strange observation to be making? Jug carrying warriors? Anyways, he comes in clue with a jug. Move that off to the side as well. The figure also has a torch, which I did start the review with the torch. I love the look of the torch with that. The, they actually did this in a translucent plastic, starting sort of more in a warmer orange, warmer orangish yellow down below here, transitioning nicely then into a yellow and then off to a kind of a, a yellowish clear to the top. Really does look nice. And again, you can, I mean, this whole time of talking about any of these, you can actually store them. Store the torch in his hand at the opener of this review. I'm sure with all the other things that the figure has at his disposal, I'll be likely displaying other things as we wrap the figure's review up. Uh, the figure also comes included with a shield. The thing I like about the shield is if you look to the back, it looks like it's got a leather strap on one side, the handle then on the other. Uh, it's a little on the lighter side, but I do like the additional attention to detail by adding scratch marks there to the front. Either he's been battling a big giant cat, or those are likely sword slashing marks. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. It's not really, I'm sure, what a sword slashing sound sounds like. And that basically can, again, be housed on either one of his hands. Uh, by the way, I did start the review doing this. Again, you just take the hand, feed it through the loop like this, and then you just want to pry the plastic. Or you can also do two, is pop the hand off, fit it around first the handle, and then when it's securely attached to the handle, just basically pop it into the provided peg, the peg hole of his forearm. Uh, the figure also comes in clue with a series of interchangeable hands before we actually kind of talk about his larger wielding weapons. Uh, he has gripping hands right now that are very attached onto his arms. Now, he has a slightly more closed gripped hand suitable for holding the torch. A much wider gripping hand, better for holding the shield. He also comes included with a couple of interesting looking hands that I was trying to understand what they were actually for. I think this one specifically is for holding the jug. You kind of have to take your fingers and not your own fingers, but you basically just take the fingers and you wedge them in between the handle of the jug. So it looks like he's kind of just carrying it around with him. Maybe he's already had himself an evening drink. The figure also comes included with a couple of closed fists. I mean, with all the things that he has, I would never be at all tempted by the idea of displaying the figure with closed fists. How interesting are those? The answer is not very interesting at all. The figure also as well comes included with a couple of various different gripping hands. And uh, he also, again, comes with this hand, which we've already had a look at. On to now his larger accessories. Now the figure comes included with this big giant battle, would be I would imagine like a sledgehammer style of weapon. 
It's very enticing. Very intimidating, I should say. Looks really good, though. The larger hammer, as you can see, starts sort of in the gold. It's got some of the additional silver added in there as well. The handles do have, as I'm describing this to anybody with their eyes currently closed, a little bit of wrappings there in black with some additional beads or additional ringlets there of silver. He also can, of course, hold this. He can also hold a slightly smaller hammer, which if comparing the two, would you still consider this to be a hammer or a sledgehammer? You can let me know down below. This one I would definitely more consider a hammer. But again, the colors match quite nicely. So you got some golds, so you got some slightly more scuffed up, almost bronze colors. And then you've got the wrap down below there in brown. The last thing, and one of my favorite things that come included here with Elkhorn, is a big giant battle axe. This is definitely a battle axe, unlike the hatchet we looked at earlier. Again, you've got sort of chipped away pieces on the side, so it looks like he's excessively used the axe in battle. Again, I love the way they've actually uh, given this nice detailing there on the either side of the axe. It kind of looks like a, the inner workings of a maze. Perhaps if you're looking at the axe, it'll give you a clue or a direction as to where to go when you're in the Dwarf Kingdom. I don't know, maybe. You can look at that certainly from the side. Really nice looking axe though. You've got a nice wood grain there in the middle. And then on either side, you've got some gold there for the handle. And then gold, of course, for double sides of the, of the axe. Ooh, shouldn't joke about that. Okay, so the last thing that comes included with the figure, maybe for right now, we'll actually remove the torch. We'll also as well remove the shield. Let's put those off to the side. The figure also comes included with an alternate portrait. Now the portrait, to be all honest, isn't that much different than the portrait that we sort of start things with. The only thing that seems to be the case when you're looking at the two is that the alternate portrait does have a mouth slightly open. But looking though at the eyes, looking at the placement of the nose, and even the way they've sculpted the helmet, they almost look in fact identical other than just really the mouth. The one thing I would have done, I mean for all the things they've done right with this figure, is I only would have maybe made the eyes a little wider. If he's in the middle of battle, you would think that if he's screaming or if he has his mouth open like this, you would probably give him slightly wider eyes. The eyes themselves, again, look so close to one another that that's the only other thing I probably would have done differently. The head, by the way, is just a case. Popping the head off the provided post. Uh, one thing you will want to be careful of, this has happened a couple of times for me, is that the pigtail on the back, his ponytail, does actually have posability. There's a peg where this rotates back and forth, but when I was, though, removing his head, this fell off and onto the floor, and I was looking at it, and I'm thinking, why is there a hole on the back of it? And then I realized that I dropped the ponytail. So we're just going to basically pop that off the provided post, not spit on everybody while I was saying that. And then we're just going to take then the new head and pop it over the provided ball joint. Now it's a little obviously harder if you're going to be putting your head on the hands on the top. You can only be poking yourself on the horns, but that basically just fits over top of the post. It's a little harder, of course, to do. You can heat this up in hot water, but I had done it earlier. I thought I would have done a better job of maybe softening. It. Anyways, that's the alternate head sculpt. Really, is it that much different from the one that we started with? Not a lot. Not a lot at all. He still has, again, like the ponytail there on the back, so there's some posability there. It just I don't think I actually have that all the way on there. Let's get it all the way on his ball joint. All the way on his ball joint. Is it on there? I hope so. But he does have a hinge joint here. I, I, I don't even know if I would say that the posable ponytail was even important. Sorry, again, spitting on everybody. It just, it feels to me like, especially for this being so close to his shoulders like this, making this posable just seems to defeat the purpose. I mean, yeah, you can bring the ponytail a little higher up if you want to. I would rather if they just sculpted it in as one piece and, and save some of the cost of tooling this guy. I want to just, sorry, make sure I get that all the way on there. As for the rest of the details, though, on Elkhorn, what a nice looking figure this is. In upcoming reviews, though, we will be also looking at the retro-inspired versions of War Duke, Strong Heart, and I think also Grim Sword as well, courtesy of the folks over at NECA Toys. But again, like the detailing done on this guy is just fantastic. Now he has what I would imagine normally would have been a blue beard, but they've colored it in such a way, obviously you can see there's a lot more of a bluish tint to it. It works specifically and surprisingly very well here uh, with the figure. Of course, the detailing on this face, I love the little wrinkles they've got in the corners of his eyes. There's a lot of personality be said here for Elkhorn. Of course, he's got the gold helmet there on the top. The uh, helmet with the horns is not removable, so you can't take that off. Nice detailing. Also, they've additionally added here to his body. He's got the chain mail here for the top of his uh, shoulders. And then underneath that, he's basically got what I'm guessing to be a leather tunic. Nice belt there painted on the front. Got some additional gold added there to the side. And of course, there's the sheath, the scabbard, to hold his tiny little dagger. It, it is a little on the brighter side, but he does also sport himself some rather bright looking green slacks, but I love the texturing that they've added to this as well, that it looks like it could be material. Wrinkles fall where wrinkles normally would be on a body. So those are nicely done there as well. And they bunched them nicely there around his boots. 
some nice detailing though on those as well. Yeah, it's a nice looking figure. It's a little smaller on size, but even though his size being small, don't let that fool you on the amount of details and, and uh, really stuff that they put into this figure. Not only just the figure alone, but all the other things that we've been looking at. Why am I fanning my hand like this? All the other things we've been already looking at leading up to this point now. Now for the figure's articulation, the head's going to be on a ball joint, so it does rotate back and forth. It only rotates only just a little bit higher up and down. Uh, times doing this though, I've noticed that the head always again pops off the ball joint. I'm definitely going to have to heat that up again before we get the final looks. The figure does have again posable, posable ponytail on the back of his body. And then for his upper torso, his upper torso seems to have some levels of, of upper, like a ball joint. It seems to be like a little bit of movement you can actually get for his body. His arms come out easily at 90 degrees. Even though really he does have the shoulder piece of armor over top of it, it doesn't seem to limit at all being able to bring his arms out at 90. And you can also again move those arms forward and back. A little bit of a swivel there on his elbow, but the figure also does possess a double hinge on the elbow. One there and one right there. Hands as well rotate all the way around, whether you use these hands or the other hands provided with this figure. Legs split out. They're in ball joints. Yeah. You can take the legs and move them, sure, forward, and you can also as well move them back. It's a swivel there at the top of the thigh, more the way it's been assembled to the ball joint. There's the ball joint on the inside. He only has a single hinge there in his knee, but that's more than enough. He also rotates his lower leg. Articulation here up and down in his ankle, and you can also move it back and forth there as well. Eventually, though, when we do look at the uh, strong heart, the strong heart that uh, NECA did provide for an upcoming review uh, was the one that's actually on the cardboard backing. So that's actually, I think, more inspired by the original Dungeons Dragon figure line, not necessarily the ultimates that we started to have a look at in earlier reviews. Uh, again, comparing him then with the War Duke, we had already looked at War Duke and we looked at Grimsor, the Evil Knight, in earlier reviews. So certainly, if you guys did want to go back and have a look at those, we will also not only be looking at Strongheart, but also as well the retro-inspired War Duke, which essentially is taking the exact same mold of this figure and just coloring it more kind of based on the original toy line. All in all, though, really like the look of Elkhorn. Not only am I impressed with what they've been able to do with such a small packaged figure like this, but packed him all along with a lot, a ton of accessories, more than more in accessories than you'll ever really need for this figure. He may even, in fact, have to share the wealth around, even, even if you want to display the figure with a slight armory behind him. Or, hey, why not? You can also use and lend those accessories to other figures, perhaps even strong hearts. As we now wrap up the review for the Dungeons & Dragons Elkhorn, even though it may look like the figure has been abundantly stocked with accessories, I've still got myself a pile off to the side. Unused hammers, unused shields, torches, alternate head sculpts, stones, gems, and more. The figure just can't accommodate, can't carry everything. Even though he does have a pack that has an open flap to it, I still don't know if I would any, really put anything in there. The only thing I would probably consider to do is probably putting the heart. Because just because the heart is a little flatter than, say, the crystal, it would probably be the easiest thing to retrieve if I ever want to remove it later. Speaking of retrieving, while it may be easy to retrieve the backpack and unclip it from his body, it seems more harder, though, to get it back on his body. Because the clip that was provided on the back of it is just too close to the rest of the molding that you either have to pry it out open open every single time with like a screwdriver so basically just take a screwdriver and get it underneath the lip and wedge it open enough and while it's being held loop it then onto the back of his body that way or what i haven't done yet heat it while doing all the steps i just finished saying and let the plastic cool with the screwdriver underneath and then you should already have a permanent lip showing it's weird, though, that it came out of the packaging so close like that, and it does involve a little bit of customization or a little bit of tweaking in order to get it on the back of the dwarf's body. But once it's on the back of the dwarf's body, not only can it sheath and store a sword, but also a hatchet as well. Figure looks fantastic. I really am looking forward to having a look at the remaining figures. Now, again, courtesy of the folks over at NECA that did provide a whole bunch of Dungeons & Dragons in upcoming reviews. Not to give it too away early, but we are also going to be looking at the good Paladin Strongheart, the leader that basically Elkhorn follows along. And they're also we're going to be looking at the retro-inspired version of War Duke. So there's going to be a ton of Dungeons & Dragons reviews coming your way. In the meantime, though, backing up just a bit... I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA that were kind enough to provide this sample, the Dungeons & Dragons Ultimate Elkhorn, that we had the chance to have a look in this review. Have you guys uh, been collecting any of these Dungeons & Dragons figures, or are you a big fan of the game growing up? Let me know down below. If in the meantime, though, you guys did enjoy this video, I want to throw it a like. If you guys are loving the content. What? The content. That's always coming on this channel. Make sure if you haven't already. What? Make sure you hit that stop that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Thank you. And as well, turn on the bell notification. It's going to also as well be above and beyond the Dungeons and Dragons stuff. What? 
there's also going to be some more mecha reviews coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.